Cause I don't give a fuck what you say Yeah, I'ma do shit my way So you can go kick rocks I'ma stack bricks up Build what I want to make Yo, I got a lot of shit to say So I'ma do this every day I'll be writing things until I'm fucking buried in my grave Six feet deep, wonder but my body won't decay Cause my messages are timeless So they'll put them on display Oh yeah, I rap with a certainty I have a sense of urgency A message for eternity For everyone internally I have some people burning me But now they fucking learn to see I ain't the one to fuck with Now they looking nervously And I don't really care what you think of me respectfully You can kick rocks if you think you're fucking better See, I will outwork you Turn you to an enemy Hurt you so bad Good to see y'all today. Let's get into the pledge, and then I will say hello to everybody. Thank y'all for being here today, though. Here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank y'all guys for being here today. All right. Let's say hello to Tattooed Angel. Chicken Snake, what's up, brother? Donna Clark, Sunshine, Cool Gamer. Buffalo Mountain, Tennessee, girl. Hello, how are you? Kiki and Lily, how are you, girl? It's good to see you. It's good to see everybody. Uh, let's see who else we have. Gina Diamond, hey, how is everybody? It is good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. <coughs> Just got off work. I had to set it back an hour because I had to stay over a little bit at work. But I'm here now. Sorry about that. And guys, sorry that I don't get to go live every night because, like I said, I do work. And sometimes I do have to stay over. So people that... Um, You know, that unsubscribe, if you're here and you're listening, uh, that's the reason I don't get to go live every day. Uh, and if you unsubscribe because I'm not live every day, that's why. Just I'm just letting you know that. So, all right. Uh, as you've seen, the story is Dorothy Puentes, the boarding house serial killer. Um uh, This, this lady reminds me of a grandmother. Uh, she was born in 
1929, and uh, she would look like a grandmother to anybody. I mean, to me, she did. Uh, but let's get into the story and read up on it there, guys. Let me see. Present. Share screen. We are going to go with this. Share. There we go. Y'all put a one in chat if you can see. That. Let me. Hold on a minute. That was the wrong thing I had. Sorry. I mean, that was a story, but that was a. Okay, there we go. I had the wrong thing. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we'll start on this in a second. And her name is Dorothy Puente. Puente. But now, guys, don't she look like any grandma that you would, you know, you would see? But, um... Uh, let me read this about her, and then I got some stuff to tell you about the painting. There'll be hopefully some exciting news for people about the painting. Uh, there's a lot of new things coming soon. Hopefully you'll like those also. And maybe we can get this painting up off the ground. So, says so Dorothy, Dorothy Helen Puente. She was born January 9th, 1929, and she passed in March 27th, 2011. She was an American convicted serial killer. In the 1980s, she ran a boarding house in Sacramento, California, and murdered various elderly people and mentally disabled boarders. She does look like a still get a little bit, a little. Uh, before cashing their Social Security checks. Puente's total count reached nine murders. She was convicted of three, and the jury hung on the other six. Newspapers dubbed her the Death House Landlady. She was born January 29th, uh, Dorothy, Dorothea Helen Gray, on January 9th, 1929, in Redlands, California, to Trudy May Yates and Jesse James Gray. Her parents were both alcoholics and her father repeatedly threatened to kill himself in front of his children. Her father died of tuber tuberculosis in 1937. Her, her mother, who worked as a sex worker, lost custody of the children in 1938 and died in a motorcycle accident by the end of the year. Puente and her siblings were subsequently sent to an orphanage where she was this aide. Gray's first marriage at age 16 in 1945 was to a soldier named Fred McFall. Uh, who, was, uh, who had just returned from the Pacific Theater of World War II. They had two daughters between 1946 and 1948. Gray sent one child to live with relatives in Sacramento and placed the other for adoption. She also suffered a miscarriage. What's up, ghost? Good to see you, brother. Uh, her husband left her in late 1948. In the spring of 1948, Gray was arrested for purchasing women's accessories using forged checks, forged checks in Riverside, California. She pled guilty to two counts of forgery, serving four months in jail and three years probation. Six months after her release, she left Riverside. In 1952, she married, Gray married uh, merchant seaman Axel Bryn Johansson in San Francisco. She created a fake personate, persona, calling herself Tia Singola. Nia Arda, a Muslim, woman, a Muslim woman of Egyptian and Israeli descent. They had a, tr a turbulent marriage. Gray took advantage of Johansson's frequent trips to sea by inviting men to their home and gambling away his money. 
Gray was arrested in 1960 for owning and operating a bookkeeping firm as a front for a brothel in Sacramento. She was found guilty and was sentenced to 90 days in the Sacramento jail. In 61, Johansson had Gray briefly committed to DeWitt, DeWitt State Hospital after a binge of drinking, lying, criminal behavior, and suicide attempts. While there, doctors diagnosed her as a pathological liar with unstable personality. Mm. Gray and Johansson divorced in 1960, and although she continued to use Johansson's name for some time following their separation, Gray assumed the identity of Sharon Johansson, <coughs> hiding her delinquent behavior by portraying herself as a devout Christian woman. She established her reputation as a caregiver, providing young women with sanctuary from poverty and abuse without charge. Man. Uh, in 1968, Gray married Roberto Jose Puente. After 16 months, the couple separated with Gray citing domestic abuse. In 1967, she tried to serve him with a divorce petition, but Puente fled to Mexico. The divorce wouldn't be finalized until 1973. The two would continue to have a turbulent relationship and Gray filed a restraining order in 1975. Gray would continue to use the surname Puente for more than 20 years. Following her divorce, Puente focused on running a boarding house located near 15th and F Streets in Sacramento, California. She established herself as a genuine resource to the community to aid alcoholics, homeless people, and mentally ill people by holding AA meetings and assisting individuals to sign up to receive Social Security benefits. She changed her public image to, a, to that of a respectable matron by putting on vintage clothing, wearing large granny glasses, and letting her hair turn gray. She also established herself as a respected member of Sacramento's Hispanic community, funding charities, scholarships, and radio programs. She eventually met up and married Pedro, uh, Pedro Angel Montalvo, although Montalvo uh, abruptly left the relationship a week after their marriage. On December 21, 1978, Dorothy Puente was convicted of illegally cashing 34 state and federal checks that belonged to her tenants. She was given five years probation and ordered to pay $4,000 in restitution. All right, this is the victims. So we're going to go on to the victims now. So before we do, please hit that like, share, and subscribe. If you have subscribed, thank you so much. If you haven't, please think about it. We're a uh, loving community over here. We're, we're tight-knit. I consider these people family. I consider anybody family that uh, comes in here and shows support and uh, shows love and everything. Uh, anybody that comes in here and shows drama or anything like that, I consider them distant relatives. Because you know distant relatives are nothing but drama in your families. But everybody else in here, family to me. So please consider it. If not, thank you for being here. All right. On January 16, 1982, Puente picked up Malcolm McKenzie, 74, from a bar and took him back to his apartment. He reported that Puente had slipped something into his drink before robbing him of coins, watches, and other jewelry, including a diamond ring belonging to his mother, which she removed from his finger while he was incapacitated. On April 28, 1982, Ruth Monroe, 61, was found dead due to respiratory uh, depression caused by massive overdose of codeine. Monroe was reportedly in good health when she arrived at Puente's home just over two weeks prior to her death. However, by April 25th, she told a friend, I'm so sick, I feel like I'm going to die. Monroe's death was originally ruled an undetermined overdose, but it was later classified as a homicide. What's up, Stardust? It's good to see you. How are you doing? Oh, 
goodness. Let's see here. Let me get this right. Uh, on May 16th, 1982, Dorothy Osborne, 49, found checks, credit cards, and other items missing eight hours after Puente visited her home and prepared her a drink. July 1982, Puente was convicted of three grand theft charges. She was sentenced to five years in prison, state parole until March 21st, 1986, and her federal parole sentence was extended another two years until 1990. During her incarceration, she began uh, corresponding with Everson Theodore Gilmouth, a 77-year-old retiree from Oregon. At the beginning of September 1985, Gilmil Gilmouth came to Sacramento with his truck and trailer and arrived at Puente's boarding house. On September 9, 1985, after serving only half her sentence, Puente was released from prison, whereupon she was picked up by Gilmouth and Richard Ricardo, I'm sorry, Ricardo Ordico, Ordica, or Dorica, or Dorica, a close friend who lived with his family in a downstairs flat at 1426 F Street. In October of 1985, Puente wrote to Gilmouth's sister, informing her that she and Gilmouth were to be married on November 2nd. A short time later, Puente hired a handyman, Ismail Carasaca Flores, for remodeling and asked him to build a 6 foot by 30 inch by 30 inch storage box. She agreed to give him Gilmouth's truck and $800 as payment. The day after he completed the box, he returned to find the box nailed shut. Puente asked Flores to help her take the box, which now weighed approximately 300 pounds, to a storage location, but ended up dropping a box near a river about a half hour from San Francisco. December 28, 1998, it was determined that Gilmouth was previously unidentified body discovered by a fisherman alongside the Sacramento River in on January 1, 1986. His body was wrapped in numerous plastic bags and covered with a bed sheet held in place by electrical tape. Mothballs and blue toilet deodorizer were also found inside the box. It was later discovered that Gil, after Gilmouth's death, Puente mailed fake letters and cards to his sister in an attempt to make her believe he was still alive. Puente also found to have forged Gilmouth's signature on his truck's certificate of title and continued cashing Gilmouth's benefit checks until July of 1986. She looked innocent as shit, but she wasn't. Now, to me, uh, she was the first elderly female serial killer. Um, in the fall of 86, Betty Mae Palmer, 78, arrived at Puente's boarding house on October 14, 1986. Yep, Puente obtained a California ID card with her photo and Palmer's name. Two months later, the mailing address on Palmer's Social Security checks were twain, changed to Puente's F Street address. Let me see if I can uh, find a picture of the house. And it's a small house. Let's see here. Let's show you, see if I can find her house here, guys. Give me just a minute and I'll show you the house, guys. Uh, let's see. Puente Forge Palmer's signature and cashed nearly $7,000 worth of benefit checks belonging to Palmer. In November of 1988, Palmer's partially dismembered, dismembered body was discovered in a shallow hole in Puente's front yard. Her head, hands, and lower legs were never found. 
toxicology report, the presence of dox, that whatever that is, and over-the-counter and histamine, as well as haloperidol and florenzepam, both of which were previously prescribed to Palmer. She was identified on 20, January 24th, 1989 through comparison to previous medical x-rays. And she is crazy, ain't she, chicken snake? October 21st, Puente summoned a notary to the hospital room of Leonardo Carp Carpenter, 78, following a floor pans overdose. She was given power of attorney over Carpenter and began cashing her Social Security checks 10 days later. In December... After Carpenter was released from the hospital, she went to live with Puente. Once again, Carpenter returned to the hospital just a few weeks after she was discharged. In February of 1987, she disappeared. In November of 1988, her body was found in the southeastern corner of Puente's yard. Toxicology reports of Carpenter's brain tissue revealed the presence of codeine, diazepam, and florazepam. February 87, James Gallup, 62, moved in Puente's home on July 20, 1987. A potentially malignant tumor was found in Gallup's colon. He agreed for, to further testing, but Puente later contacted his officer, notifying that he had gone to Los Angeles indefinitely. Gallup's body was found buried under a gazebo in Puente's yard in November of 88. Toxicology testing of Gallup's brain and liver revealed the presence of all kinds of these drugs here that I can't pronounce, and florezepam. July of 87, Eugene Gamble, 58, was found dead of an apparent suicide, having overdosed on amitriptyline and ethanol. Puente, who was Gamble's landlady, said he had a history of suicide attempts. Though Puente was never charged with Gamble's murder, he was considered a possible victim. So she had nine victims all, in all, guys. Bear, uh, uh, October 2nd, 1987, Vera, Vera Faye Martin, 61, was sent to live with Puente starting October 5th, 1987. Puente forged a number of Martin's Social Security checks, totaling $7,000. On October 19th, 1987, Martin failed to contact her daughter on her birthday, which she had done each year. Um, in November 1988, Martin's body was found buried under a metal shed in Puente's yard. Toxicology reports of her brain and liver revealed florezepam. October 21st, 1987, Dorothy Miller, 65, was placed in an upstairs flat in Puente's home. She introduced Miller to Ricardo or Dorica, and the following November, or Dorica became the representative pay for Miller's Social Security benefits. Just weeks after her arrival, Miller disappeared, and on November 20th, 1987, Puente hired a carpenter, carpet cleaner to remove a large pile of foul-smelling slime in Miller's room. Puente continued to forge Miller's check, totaling over 11000 After she was no longer at her house, Miller's remains were later discovered buried under a slab of concrete near some rose bushes. Tissue samples from Miller's brain revealed the presence of carbamazepine and florazepam. She loved that florazepam, didn't she? Uh, November 29, 1987, Brenda Trujillo sent a letter to the Social Security office in Sacramento accusing Puente of stealing her Social Security checks totaling $3,500. Yes, scamming senior citizens and un underprivileged, but she also was killing these people instead of just scamming them. She was scamming people, but she was also killing them. Trujillo met Puente in the Sacramento County Jail in 1982, and the two later shared a prison cell. Sorry about that, guys. I didn't mean to hit that. Uh, 
After her release, Trujillo moved into Puente's boarding house where Puente helped her apply for Social Security benefits. Trujillo claimed that Puente drugged her and called her parole officer, causing her parole to be revoked before Trujillo received the checks. February of 88, Alvaro Burt Gonzalez Montoya, 51, arrived at Puente's home in March, an application designating Puente as Montoya's benefit payee was filed. At the end of August, a roommate saw a man clearing Montoya's clothes out of the closet. He missed an appointment on August 29th and was last seen August 24th. Hello, Deanna in Ohio. How are you? Uh, no, I haven't heard of that, Kiki. I'll have to look that up. Quintes told several people that Montoya went to Mexico to visit relatives. Social workers continued to attempt to contact Montoya in September and October to no avail. In November, Puente asked Donald Anthony, a former convict who had been working in New York, to contact the social worker, pretending to be Montoya's brother-in-law. He agreed and stating his name was Michael Obergon and that he picked up Montoya from the F Street house and took him to Utah. The social worker was suspicious and told Puente that she was going to call the police. On November 10th, the social worker received a letter purportedly from Michael Obergon wrapped in a paper towel to avoid fingerprints. Days later, Montoya's body was found adjacent to Carpenter Toxiology. Adjacent to Carpenter. Oh, the other person. Are we fine? I hope y'all were doing good, Dan. Well, I'm. It's telling where everybody was killed and where they were buried. So, uh, Montoya had prescriptions for all the drugs except the Carbam. That that name there. On March 9, 1980, Benjamin Fink, 55, was sent to live with Puente. Fink's brother visited him on a weekly basis for six weeks. By the end of April, excuse me. Uh, by the end of April, Fink was gone. Another tenant reported smelling a foul odor emanating from his room, but was told by Puente that it was a sewer backup. On April 29th, Puente received 12 bags of cement. That June, she had a hole dug next to the door of the metal shed, which was later filled with concrete. In November, Fink's body was discovered in this area, wrapped in plastic knotted bed sh spread, secured with duct tape, and covered with blue absorbent Pads. His toxicology report revealed the presence of all them medicines again. November nineteen, uh, November 7th, 1988, police spoke with John Sharp, a former resident, about the disappearance of Montoya. Initially, Sharp told the police that he had seen Montoya two days earlier, but then slipped a note to the officer that said, She wants me to lie to you. He later mate, met with an officer to tell his story. On November 11th, 1988, a detective returned to Puente's residence and, with her permission, began digging in areas that appeared to be recently disturbed. Thirty minutes later, he discovered the pers first body. Just hours after the body was discovered in her backyard, Puente slipped away from police. November 13, 1988, All Points Bulletin was issued for Puente. November 16, 1988, Charles Willings, along with Gene Silver of CBS, alerted police to Puente's whereabouts at a motel in Los Angeles. Will Goose met Puente's, who was using the alias Donna Johansson, the day before at a nearby bar. He later called, recalled seeing her on CBS Morning Newcast and reached out to Gene Silver, who met with Will Goose at his apartment. The two contacted law enforcement officer, and Puente was arrested the same day. November 17, 1988, Puente was flown from Hollywood Burbank Airport to Sacramento, escorted by police and booked into the county jail. She was then formally charged with the murder of Montoya. On March 10, 1989, criminal charges against Flores was dismissed due to the statute of limitation expiring three years after Gilmel's body was discovered. Flores was later granted immunity for his testimony against Puente. Hello, Tina. How are you? It's good to see you. 
March 31st, 1989, an amended complaint was filed charging Puente with nine counts of murder with special circumstances qualifying it as a death penalty case. According to investigators, most of the victims had been drugged until they overdosed. Puente then wrapped them in bed sheets and plastic lining before dragging them to open pits in the backyard for burial. By May 24, 1980, the prosecutor arrested his case having called 71 witnesses and introducing 108 exhibits in the preliminary hearing. On June, 9th, on June 19, 1990, a judge ruled that there was ample circumstantial evidence in Puente to trial. On July 31, 1990, Puente pleaded not guilty. After numerous delays, October 19, 1992, a judge ruled that Puente would face all nine murder counts and all cases would be heard in Monterra, County on December 21st, 1992. Twelve jurors consisting of eight men and four women were selected for the trial the following month. Six alternate jurors, five women and one man, were selected to back up the twelve regular jurors. February 9th, 1993, her trial began. By the conclusion of the trial, 156 witnesses and more than 3,100 exhibits had been submitted. Over 22,000 pages of transcript. After deliberating for 11 days on August 2nd, 1993, the judge told the jury told Judge Michael J. Berger that they were deadlocked on all nine counts of murder and asked for further instructions. The next day, uh, Berger ordered the jury to resume their efforts to break the deadlock. August 26, 1993, Puente was convicted on three counts of murder, Benjamin Fink, Leona Carpenter, and Dorothy Miller. The jury, after deliberating for 35 days, remained deadlocked on six cases. Ruth Monroe, Everson Theodore, Gilmouth, Betty Mae Palmer, James Gallup, and Vera, May, Vera, Vera Faye Martin, and Alva Ray Gonzalez Montoya. During the penalty phase of the trial, jurors found themselves deadlocked once again. October 13, 1993, Puente was spared the death penalty, and on December 10, she was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. She was incarcerated at Central California Women's Facility in Chowchilla, California. August 28, 1997, Appellate Court in San Jose affirmed Puente's murder conviction but ordered an examination of juror misdon misconduct allegations after a three-day hearing. September 25, 1998, Judge William Curtis rejected each allegation of jury misconduct in her trial. Puente died in prison at Chowchilla on March 27, 2011 from natural causes. She was 82. All right, guys, let me show you the let me show you the house that she lived in or the uh, house where this happened. Very small house. I don't see how she could have got away with this. Just my opinion and my opinion only. So this is the house that happened. And actually now today, right here stands a... Uh, life-size cutout of Dorothy Puente right here and there's a sign right here that says uh, oh I can't remember how it says it let's uh, something about if you're afraid of ghosts or something like that there's a sign on there about ghosts of the people that she had killed and stuff like that so Yeah, that's, that's a weird-ass story. The woman was actually crazy, very, very crazy. Uh, yeah, so was a tiny house. She drug people, took their money, carried them. Yeah, she was a monster, Summer Thunder. Give me just a second, guys. Becca, will you bring uh, some of the pictures that I made recently in here, like the last four or five, something like that. You don't have to bring them all. 
And guys, like I said, uh, my, that was the end of that story, guys. I'm sorry. And while we're doing this, like I said, there is something new coming out from Freebird Paint. And um, hopefully you guys will like it. Hopefully you guys might buy you one. Uh, but they're handmade. Not exactly, Deanna. Not all people, not all old people are sweet. But she does remind you of somebody's grandma. She, and like uh, Angel said, she looked a little like Estelle Getty, in my opinion. I'm going to let you hold them up. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to let Becca hold them up. Now, these are some of the new pictures that I've just recently done. You don't have to hold it that close up. Hey, Tiptoe. Hey, Tiptoe. There's one. There's one. There's the other one. Go ahead. Now this is a walking oh, this is Sorry. a walking dead one. This is the new walking dead. See where it says dead inside? And look at that. And this is my undersea picture. You can't see my things. I gotta get a bigger knife. Hey Sky, welcome, honey. And this one. Upside down. Dang it. Sorry. Hey, Sky, how are you? And if you want to, get your picture down over there and show them. Oh, this one I, my favorite. This one I made for Becca. She, just as soon as I made it, she took it. So Absolutely. She put it in a picture frame. It's beautiful. But he can make them, guys. If I can get them off. Just have to be careful. You got to do one side at a time. Give her just a minute. Thank you, Tiptoe. And like I said, um, the next thing coming out is it's something new that I'm going to try. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. Did you get it? Stick your hand where the screw is. And it should pop out. Favorite. I got a bunch of favorites, but I absolutely adore now this, is, this one. Becca took this one. Yeah. Beautiful. I love it. You can order them from my. Uh, let me go get my. Let me go get my page where you can order them from. Give me just a second, guys. I think it's this one. Thank you so much, Sky. You're amazing too, love. This is my favorite, which I got a lot of favorites, but as soon as he showed this one to me, I was like, it's going in the frame. It's mine. Thank you. I just, <laughs> now right here is, no, not right there. Right here is where you can order them. If you want to, go on that page and all the pictures there, except these last ones I just done. These last ones ain't yet. I haven't been done yet. I'm trying to find a place where I can make a website where you can go on the website and look at them instead of just my Facebook.
but you can go there and order them. Just go there and pick you out a picture. Or if you want one of the Jesus ones, they're a little different. Uh, you just have to tell me what you would like for a background and then the Jesus picture. Because I can do the background different. I can do the back, the Jesus in white, blue, red, uh, black, whatever colors. But it's right there at that page right there. You get to stay up? Cock out a little bit. I'm hoping so. I hate for the Just lay it down on the bed just in case. Yeah, lay it down on the bed. Good with hanging up shit. <laughs> you can take him back in there too, But now you can ask Becca. I I seen something that was done over on a uh, another page, and I thought I'm going to try that. So I ordered the stuff to do it. Yeah, that's the one that Becca picked. She that's hers because she loves. But he, but he can, but he can make them. And the thing about it is, he's putting. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's like a a glitter. I don't know. Probably can't. It's like a glitter shine. No, you it's can't. not real clear. But yeah, it's real pretty. He puts a glitter shine over it. It's real pretty. Maybe. I don't know if you can see the glitter shine. They're a lot prettier in, in person. Yeah. Though. They got glitter all the way all over them. I found them some glitter spray paint and I was like, ooh, that's pretty too. Thank you, Sky. Thank you, Summer. He's come a long way. He can do just about anything, guys. Yeah. What is it? Six months now? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah, I've been at this about about six months. And did you get what's your name's address? She said she was going to email me. Okay. Because I looked all over the house. Yeah, for we've looked I for I had it. no idea where it's at. <laughs> and that was Kiki, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kiki. Sorry. Well, I don't like keeping nobody's address, so we just tossed it. Yeah. <laughs> she said it was good because her birthday's in April, so she'd get around her birthday. <laughs> well, good deal. <laughs> but I I try different things, and if you're if you're close around, I do do furniture too. If you got a piece of furniture that you want done, I can paint the top of it. Usually anything. I've never tried the sides, but I could probably do it also. Never tried it, but wouldn't hurt to try. I don't guess. He's painted that. Um, um. I can do them tables from Walmart, them plastic tables. I. I can do glass. He painted one of the tables on my front porch. It's real pretty. Real pretty. It's a big old round plastic table. Real pretty. So how is everybody tonight? It's been a while since we've been on here. Uh, we're going to do another one tomorrow. And tomorrow's show, guys, is uh, Do You Believe in Psychics? And one that keeps coming to... Yes, you can become a member here. Hit... All you got to do is hit the dollar sign down at the bottom of the chat. This channel I monetized, but the other one I didn't monetize. I have another channel that we play music on on the weekends. Um, but tomorrow's show is... Uh, okay, just type in exclamation iPhone. Um, let's see. Let me see if I can do it here. Should be able to click this link right here. Ah, Tina. Hey, that, Tammy. Hey, Tammy Crimes. How are you? That iPhone link right there, you should be able to use... Uh, Sky. Thank you, PCT. Thank you, PCT. 
member for eight months. Thank you so much for that. Now, the other channel that we have is where it just popped up, White Trash. That's where we play music on Friday and Saturday nights. Friday night is a bonfire. Saturday night is a concert. Thank you, Summer Thunder, for being a member for five months. Sky, thank you so much for joining now. Thank you, love. <laughs> for joining the Freebirds, this is what you get. It's a little, a little um, music montage. Here you go, Sky. Thank you so much. Feel the blood creeping up from the heathens. Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason. If they want to go eat, then you know I'm going to feed them. If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon. I got eyes in the back of my head. I'm seeing take me. You got me dancing, and it's not Thank long enough. You. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Thank you so much. Thank you for becoming a free bird, girl. Yes, now she's family. Thank you so much, Scott. Hey, Tammy. Hey, You're Tammy. Doing well, sweetheart. Now, y'all, please share out the channel. Let's let's build the channel up. Subscribe if you don't care. You can become a member. We love you too, Scott. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Well, <laughs> also, it's not required, but if you'd like to help with the channel, you can do so in the Cash App or the PayPal. It does not require the only requirement. Y'all come in here and have a good time. Ah, oh, here we go. Here we go, Tina. Tina loves to ride that train. Here you go, Tina. This is for your super chat. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you so much. Cause I don't give a fuck what you say. Yeah, I'ma do shit my way. So you can go kick rocks. I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make. Yo, I got a lot of shit to say, so I'ma do this every day. I'll be writing things until I'm fucking buried in my grave. Six Thank you, Tina. That is very kind of you. Thank you so much, girl. Joan Marie, thank you. She was an evil, evil lady. What's up, Ghost Eagle? How are you? Um, thank you, Beachy. Thank you so much. Uh, but like I was saying, the donation is not required. It would be appreciated, but it's not required. The only requirement I ask of you Come in here and have a good time and enjoy the people here and enjoy the content. Hopefully the content gets uh, good for y'all. Uh, but now if you do do a cash app or PayPal, the only thing I do is use that and put it in to get more paint and supplies and stuff like that, guys. That's all I use it for. It's good to see you, Beachy. Thank you for being here. And how are you today, Miss Joni? Thank you, Tammy. And I hope you guys can... The one up there? Oh, I've had that one. I've had that one for a while. I got that one there. And right below it is a the Rebel Flag ski mask. And then I got um, I got a couple others that are hanging over here. They're the black ones. And then my riding mask are up there. But now, like I was saying, oh, and also uh, Summer Thunder, if you're still in here, do you have the email for the bonfire? Or does any, Becca, if you've got, if you can get it, put the email for the bonfire in here. And if you'd like to hear Okay, this Friday is Women in Rock. Thank you, Summer Thunder. Grab that email right there.
put it in your email. Send me a song that you would like to hear from a, any women in rock from the 1950s up. And I will play it Friday night on White Trash Family 2229 at the bonfire. But be sure to put the name of the song, the name of the lady in it, and your YouTube name. And that way I can say who it's from because I won't use your real name on uh, YouTube. And then Saturday night we're having, I think it is Stone Temple Pilots. I'm not quite sure. I think that's who it is. But please come over. Please subscribe. Share this Tattooed Rebel channel out. I was at uh, 1995. I'm at 1992 now. So, no, I was at 1997 last night. I've done Lost Five. Don't know how I've done it, but that's okay. As long as you people, good people, come in here and listen to me and enjoy the time that you spend here. That's all well and good with me, guys. Anything like that? It's all well and good with me. I know there's so many awesome women in Rock Beachy. Hey, you was born before 19... Um, 19 uh, you was born after 1950, Beachy. Put one of your songs in there. It's, one of you, it's who you like to hear. It's who you would like to hear. As long as I don't get struck, you can play anything. Well, I ain't worried about it over there because that channel's not monetized. This one is. So, yeah, go ahead, bitchy. You can put one of your songs in there. If you have one that... Mm. Well, I hope you're all right, Tammy, and I hope you're getting better. And we'll send prayers out for you. Oh, goodness. I'm tired, guys. One more day before my weekend starts. So, guys, I'm not going to stay on here much longer. But as Nightbot says, much love and respect to everyone who's here. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy your time here. Do me a favor. Please, on your way out, hit that like, share, and subscribe. And if you have subscribed, thank you so very much. If you haven't, please think about it. Uh, I want to thank everybody for the memberships here. Tina, eight months. Summer Thunder, five months. So many more people that uh, has been here since day one. I want to thank all y'all. I want to thank Tina for the uh, donation. I want to thank Sky for becoming a new member. A new family member. Uh, so please share us out. Let's get us built up. We need to build me up now. Uh, hopefully, like I said, this summer, we will be doing some bonfires outside. As long as it don't disturb the neighbors. Because I like to play it loud when I play it. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, tomorrow night is, uh, is, um, uh, a story on Sylvia Brown. She was a psychic in the eighties that was really a scammer. Hey, Mama P.I., it's good to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Kiki. I'm going to use that. Build me up, Buttercup. And I'll be your Huckleberry. I like that, Kiki. Thank you. Um, but Sylvia Brown was a psychic. She predicted one thing, and I'll find it and show you all that tomorrow, but she predicted one thing, 
out of the whole time she was around. She first started out that she was, you know, she done her psychics, psychic abilities for free. And then as she got older, she said, hey, I can make money off it. So she started charging. And then she got a little bit famous when she went on the Montel Williams show. And um, then she started getting a little bit um, caught in her scams and stuff. So there was a lot of people that caught on to her. And uh, thank you, Tammy. Everybody, you stay blessed. Please, you stay blessed. And prayers to you, Tammy. And hope you get to feeling better very soon. And much love and respect to you. Sylvia sure made the money. She sure did. There was like, like I said, I watched a few things on her last night. Uh, not last night. Was it last night? Yeah, it might have been last night. That she would tell that uh, the kids was dead or the missing person was dead. And they would find the kids or find the family members. Some were kids, some were uh, adults but they would find them years later and they wasn't dead. And there were some that she would say were dead. I mean, wasn't dead that they actually were dead. So, you know, that's, that's killing people's heart. But now she made her money. She made that paper, but she made it the wrong way. And guys, you know, one thing that I've been saying on here, there's a lot of people that talk about, making money on YouTube. Uh, I try and make money on YouTube, and y'all people donate to me, and I love y'all for it, and I appreciate y'all for it. I really, really do. Um, and I tell you what the money's for. If I'm going to say I'm going to use it, like for the Cash App and the PayPal, it's going to be used for paint, or if I need it for whatever. Because, you know, and... Just like y'all, I don't, I don't say it's a requirement and you don't have to, but because y'all live like I do, I live paycheck to paycheck and most of y'all do too. So I know what it's like. So that's why I say it's not a requirement. The only requirement I want from y'all is y'all come in here and have a good time and enjoy the time. Thank you, Tina. <coughs> I'll, I'll stop over by. Thank you so very much, Tina, for your donation or your super chat, I'm sorry, and for you coming in and hitting the like. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Uh, but like I said, if you're going to make money on here, make money on here. That's why most people come on here is to make money. I'll say 65 to 75% come on here to make money. I'm not going to lie. Uh, everybody knows our story summer thunder just you know everybody when i first started i seen all this doxing and all this stuff going on no i'll tell you my history i have told my history my uh my whole life history from my my record all the way up to now people want to accuse people of this and that do it there's some things that i don't agree with on here but that's your life. Uh, you have to live it. I don't. I have to live my own. Uh, love Tina to death. I love her to death. She's a great woman. I just don't agree with the way she dances. She can dance. She is a great dancer. A great dancer. I just don't agree with the shots. And I hope this don't hurt your feeling, Tina. I'm just saying. I'm not coming at you, Tina. I love you. I just don't like the way that your dances are. But if you done, like last night, I did see you dance last night. I was tired, and I did watch you. But I was tired. I think I come in and said hello. Last night, you were beautiful. I know, I know you are, because I did hear you say that. But you were beautiful dancing. I love that. I'm not going to say nothing about it. Just the other way, to me, you don't have to do that. You don't have, and that's okay. 
you don't have to do that because you're beautiful inside and out. I know you. In, well, I don't know you personally. You know what I'm saying. I know you. You're beautiful from what I've seen inside and out. I think that you don't need to do that. I think that you just need to dance. You are beautiful when you dance. You are beautiful when you don't dance. You're a good-hearted person. People just come at you different. I don't have a problem with you, and I don't have a problem with Rose. I know you were. I know you were, Tina, and I love it. I love that you rebelled. Just I, And y'all wouldn't want to see that. Y'all wouldn't want to see that. But I wouldn't have done it like that. But I love your dancing. I love your dancing. You are a great dancer. Well, thank you so much, uh, Sky. You didn't have to do that. Thank you so much. Give me just a second, and I will play something for you. Give me just one second. Let me do this. Where'd it go? And I sent you a reply. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. I sent you a reply back. And this is for you. Uh, Sky. This is for you, Sky. Thank you. And I call those super chats. So thank you for the super chat, Sky. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you say Yeah, I'ma do shit my way So you can go kick rocks I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make Yo, I got a lot of shit to say So I'ma do this every day I'll be writing things until I'm fucking buried in my grave Thank you, Sky. You're very sweet for that, thank you But, guys, I love each and every one of you uh, I don't have nothing against Rose, and I don't have nothing against uh, Tina at all. I think they are both, they just got different, what's it say? What do I think about what's going on down in Tennessee? The, what are you talking about? The, um, all the missing people, really? I, See, Mom and P.I., I don't get to watch much because I am uh, always working. And they're working me over recently because people are calling in. It's getting summertime and all that. Sin City Raps, thank you, brother, for being here. Um, I hope I said so right. Yeah, I'm neutral, guys. I love I love everybody. Oh, the um, oh the boy. Don't be ashamed, Tina. Do not be ashamed. That was the way you felt at the time. Do not be ashamed. Okay. What is it? Um, Oh my goodness, I can't think of that boy's name. Sebastian, is that who you're talking about, Mama P.I.? I did see where um, his mom and dad were gone. They took off. They took off, and I think that was wrong. Just like I've said with the Summer Wells case, guys, why take off? If you have a kid that's missing, why, if you're not guilty of anything, why in the hell are you going to leave? They, uh, Don and Candace left. Why leave if you have a kid missing? Sebastian missing. Why did his parents leave? Why was he telling lies on the Nancy Grace show? I did see a, a thing 
where Nancy, I think her name is Nancy Grace. I think so. But she was telling lies. Yes. They're very suspicious. The Sebastian's stepdad and mom are very suspicious. And I don't care who knows it. Candace, Don, and Grandis are suspicious in the Summer Wells case. I, I, I don't know. That's the way I feel. And I, if it upsets anybody, that's just my feelings, guys. Um, it was Nancy Grace. Okay. Thank you, Summer Thunder. Excuse me just a minute, guys. All right, the, our kids are not missing. They had a school threat over here at our school. Was it last week, Angel? I think it was last week. End of last week or the end of the week before last. Anyway, you're a parent. Something is wrong with your child or someone is threatening your child. Did I tell Becca, well, let's get up and go to Go to uh, Burger King, grab something deep before we go. Hell no. I said, Becca, let's go. Go to the school now. And what pissed me off about that, guys, and I'm not trying to change this up, but the school didn't call us. Uh, our kids called us and said, hey, this is going on. Why not call us from the school last Wednesday? Okay. But... We didn't get up and say, yeah, let's let's go get us something to eat, and then we'll go get the kids. No, our kids were in danger. There was something wrong with our kids. Now, let's go straight now. If I could have, I'd have went in our underwear or my underwear to grab our kids. I don't, there is no shame in my game. I would have went and grabbed our kids in my underwear. You, I have a shirt over here. Look, hurt my wife, hurt my kids, hurt my son, hurt my grandson. Threaten any of my kids. Threaten any of my kids. And I'll help them look for your body. Simple as that, guys. Do not threaten my kids. Do not threaten my family of any kind. You can threaten me all day. Because if you whoop my ass, you're going to have to whoop my ass again the next day. So pack your lunch and come back the next day. But if you threaten my kids, you won't be coming back the next day. I'm telling you straight up. That is family. Don't fuck with family. So, with that being said, why in the hell your kid is missing? Why in the hell would you get up and take off? Summer Wells has been missing going on three years. Is it three years? Why in the hell get up and take off to another state to look for work? There's work here. I don't care if you had to dig that fucking shithole for an outhouse. There is work here. It is wrong. It is very wrong for the way parents can think that they can get away with shit. Because in the end, it will come back. Look, if, 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 Sebastian's parents done something to him and they don't get him here on earth, he will have to stand in front of that man above. And when he opens that book, he'll say, what did you do to Sebastian? Thank you, chicken snakes. 14 months, baby. Hell yeah. Thank you, brother. I really do appreciate that. But he's going to have to stand in front of that man upstairs with that book open. And say, let's see, you really killed Sebastian? And you think that you're going to get in heaven? This was a gift that I gave you. Even though, even though that you make that baby, that baby is a gift from heaven. This is just my opinion, guys, so y'all don't have to like my opinion. You don't have to listen to my opinion. It's just my opinion. But kids are a gift from heaven. Why 
take something that was given to you as a gift and destroy it because you're going to have to pay for it one day. Summer Wells was a gift from heaven. That was a, all kids are beautiful, guys. I'm not saying anything. Summer Wells was a beautiful blonde-haired girl, little girl. She had a long life to go. I'm not saying, I don't know. In my heart, I want to say she's still alive. In my heart, I do. I don't think that that's the case. Do I think the bylaw, I was talking about, I, no, I think the stepfather did. I think that's the stepfather. But you were supposed to take, and another thing, once, once a baby is born, I don't care how old you are, you could be 18. If you lay down with a woman or you lay down with a man and you have a baby, your, your life is not over, but you had to give your life to that. Really? I, I had to fix that, Sky. I'm sorry. I'll fix it, and it'll be it'll be fixed tomorrow. I'm sorry. Uh, your life is not over, but you have to put your life on hold and take care of that baby because that baby, you live... Thank you, Angel. You live for your baby. No, you're fine, Chicken Snake. Uh, but you have to live for your babies. And until they're 18, you are responsible for everything they do. You are also responsible for everything that you do. So if you harm your children, if you get away with it here on earth, you won't get away with it afterwards. So the mom and the stepdad and the Sebastian, um, I don't forget his last name, guys. I am so sorry. The Sebastian boy that's missing. I think the stepdad and the mom had something to do with that. I hope not, and I hope and pray. And I could be wrong, guys. I could be wrong, but that's just my opinion. And, guys, I am uh, Sebastian Rogers. Thank you. And, guys, I am a believer. I am a firm believer in the Constitution of the United States. Everybody has opinions. And I may not like yours, you may not like mine, but we have the right to say our opinions. So you can say your opinion in here, I can say my opinion in here. I may not like somebody's and I may give you my opinion on your opinion, but you can also give me your opinion on my opinion. Now, let me tell you this, Kiki, if Becca ever caught me on the phone with my ex-wife for three hours. I would not be sitting here talking on this story right now. Would I, Angel? Watch. She'll be commenting in just 30 seconds. I guarantee you. Comment will pop up. That's why they're an ex for a reason. See, told you it wasn't even 30 seconds, was it? But like I said, that's just my opinion, guys. And I, you know, <coughs> I hope I don't mess, you know, not mess, make somebody mad. But hopefully they are a gift from God. I've always said that. We have a right to dis, we have a right to agree to disagree. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. But as you can see, I love my we the people. I love it. As a matter of fact, it is part of this. The the stars around the free bird and my white trash family. 
Angel would be big mad. She would be big mad, Joni. Big, big mad. And and to be honest, guys, I would be big mad at her. Beachy said it right. It's a sad, sad world that we're going. And, you know, guys, I I don't want to really, I guess it's, to me, I hate that the way that my kids have to grow up in the world today with all the shit that's going on. And I can imagine what it's going to be like for my grandson as he gets older and goes up into life. And I can I do not want to imagine what it's going to be like for my grandchildren from Tyler and Trinity because it's just going to get worse and worse and worse if we don't do something about it. We have to do something about it, guys. Mom P, I said my husband be picking but Oh, Buckshot, that would hurt. God, money. Close the door. We'll close the door. You get up and sit down. You want me to cut it? Hmm? You want me to cut it? Yeah, I want it all the way. Cut I it all the way? I want my men in, Dad. You have? I have some. I didn't yet. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, you want to watch some movie after we left? We might. We might. Ready to watch the Fast Furious? We might. Uh... Angel will be getting her skillet out. Yes, she would. Yes, she would. But, guys, I'm going to go ahead and jump off here. Uh, like I said, tomorrow night is uh, the psychic. Thank you, Deanna. He is cute. I love him to death. Uh, he was in there in his bed last night, and me and Beckett went to sleep. And I woke up this morning about 4.30 to go to the restroom. Didn't notice him laying there at the foot of the bed. When I come back in here, he's laying there at the foot of the bed with curled up. And then our dog King is laying right there with him. I remember them days. Parents had no worry. Hell, summer thunder. My grandpa, when I was younger, back in like the early, late 70s, early 80s, my grandmother would sleep, go to bed, and leave the door unlocked. And this is in a small, it's in a small town. I mean, real small. I think there was like 700 people in that small town. What's up, Sasquatch? How are you, sir? But you can't do it no more. You can't do it no more. So, guys, I'm going to say goodnight. But please be sure to hit the like on the way out. Please be sure to subscribe if you haven't if you have thank you so very much also don't forget to come in tomorrow night and don't forget to put your song in for the bonfire friday night uh i'll be putting the channel in again if you haven't subscribed over to white trash family come over friday and saturday and enjoy the music with us also if you would like to donate to the channel you can in the cash app or the paypal the money will be used to buy more paint and more supplies for my painting projects. And a new project will be coming out soon. Yeah, that's a little crazy. Uh, but you do not have to. Joni, thank you for being here, honey. Good night. And I love you. Y'all be good. Stay safe. But you don't have to donate. It would just be appreciated. But the only requirement I do ask you. It's good seeing you too, motivated one legger. The only thing that I ask is you come in here, have a good time, and enjoy the family and friends that we're sitting here and talking with. Uh, but y'all be here tomorrow night because I'm going to talk about Sylvia Brown. Sylvia Brown is a nutcase that was a psychic back in the 80s. And uh, she was just a scam artist. So. Much love and respect to everyone here. Much love and respect to everyone that showed up. And I will see you tomorrow night. Everybody that donated to the channel. Uh, every, Tina that donated. Uh, Sky that joined. And everybody that has been here for so long. Thank you all so much.
please come hang out tomorrow. You're a good motivated one legger. I come on. Well, it's now mon Monday through Thursday. It's different because I don't know when I'm going to be able to go on. But Fridays and Saturdays, you know when I'm going to be able to go on. Oh, and Sunday night will be game night. We're going to start having a game night. We're going to try it and see how you like it. So game night, Tattooed Rebel, Sunday nights. Hopefully you like it. I've never seen it done on YouTube, this game anyway. I have seen it done on TikTok, but not on YouTube. So hopefully you like game night. Y'all be sure and come back. Much love and respect to each and every one here. We love you here. You guys stay safe. Stay out of trouble. And we will see you tomorrow night. Love y'all. Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that spitting slow, spitting fast I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past And the pettiness, a reflection of the emptiness Hilarious, you think you're worth my time, you're delirious Mysterious, because you are behind a fake exterior Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words you can say the